and hello everyone and welcome to the fourth episode of Coffee with Tia. Thanks for being here, receiving your usual monthly dose. I'm Sara Ristaska, Young European Ambassador, and I will be your host for today. Although I usually prefer to drink my first morning coffee in silence, my second one is reserved for the things that inspire me. I'm most often inspired by a good book, but today, even though I'm in a room full of books, I'm sure that my inspiration will come out from the conversation with my today's guest. He says for himself that his job is to help people make great apps, teams, and speeches. He is not only helping others to have great applications, but also he has created such one. An application that inspired change within a community, became tool for activists and governments, and has started a movement for clean air. Good and one of you, welcome. First Thank of all, so I would like to ask you, how are you? I am doing quite well. It's the Monday that we're recording this, but it's it's going quite well. Um, I must say I'm looking forward to the weekend. Every time the weather outside is nice like this and sunny, I am more than happy. Yes, they say man, uh, the coffee is a cup of hope uh, in a world full of, full of mundane chaos. Exactly, uh, exactly. <laughs> um, you say for yourself that you are a software engineer by profession and eco-activist by heart. But when you Google Goran Yovanovsky, you can also find that Goran is also a public speaking coach, management trainer, and young entrepreneur. So my question would be, um, who is actually Goran Yovanovsky? <laughs> uh, Goran is, uh, is, is a guy that's, uh, I don't know, lost in translation, trying to help make the world a better place. It might sound very Miss Universe, but one of the main reasons why I get up in the morning is knowing that I might have a positive impact on myself, on my neighbors, maybe on my city, maybe on the country, and who knows, maybe one day on the whole world. Uh, but while I'm here on, on this beautiful tiny speck in the Milky Way that we call Earth, I really do want to, to see ways to make a positive change and a positive impact. So that's usually Gorian in a very vague and, and, and Miss Universe kind of style. Uh, maybe you said uh, your short version of uh, your biography, but it is very inspiring. Um, combining the passion for the technology and commitment to environmental protection, you create a near care an application that displays the extent of air pollution across the country. And it is used today in 45 countries and has half million users. So how the story of air care or Moi Wozu begins and how it was developing through the years? Right. Um, so in, in the longer version of the bio, you might find that I am a software engineer by trait. Uh, finished university here, went to uh, my master's studies of software engineering in Amsterdam. Um, but I've always had a hidden passion for ecology, for, for nature, for green, hence my shirt. Uh, I've really, really loved, uh, loved that passion. So at one point I started thinking, okay, how can we combine these two things? My love of technology, I've been a geek ever since I, I, I touched my first computer following the, the, the family tree of geeks and then uh, the nature passion. Um, it was winter 2014, if I don't, uh, if I recall correctly, I was a student, university student here in Skopje and sitting at home, uh, it was winter, it was cold, and I was trying to teach myself how to make mobile apps. Uh, at this point, we have the internet, we have YouTube, you can look up any tutorial, you can figure things out, especially if you have a little bit of knowledge in, in, in computer science before. Um, but I didn't want to make any regular app. I didn't want to make an app that would say, hi, my name is Gorian, end of story. Um, so I was searching online for ideas. And that's when I stumbled upon uh, the government's information about the air quality outside. We had roughly, I think, 18, 19 stations at that time that were monitoring air quality throughout the country. And I looked at these numbers and I said, maybe this is interesting. How about we take these numbers and display them in an app? Why not? Um, but I downloaded these numbers and I ran some algorithms to try and understand what they're telling me. Uh, but every time I would run these algorithms, there would be a bug in the code. I couldn't get it to work because every time I would run them, it would say, hey, look, it's 20 times over the EU limit. Air pollution outside is four times more than Beijing. And it was, I mean, it was ridiculous. It was stupid. It, it, it couldn't be true. 
until I check the code multiple times and realize the code is not the problem. The air pollution is indeed that bad. Um, and kind of, a, it was a shock because why is no one talking about this? Where's, where's the media jumping on this? Why are people not on the streets? What is going on? I think that's when I realized this is information. This is data that needs to be public as much as possible. It needs to be out there. And I decided, hey, let's make air care. Or like you said, Moy Vozduk, which in Macedonian literally means my air, uh, which was the local initial name of the app. And that's how it came to be. I made an app for myself, for my friends, posted it on social media, and it grew rapidly. People started downloading it. People started uh, getting more interested about, hey, is this actually what we're breathing? Is this the thing that I see outside? Because even I, though I remember with my friends, we used to call it the smell of winter outside. We would romanticize it in a way. It's like, oh, it smells like winter again. No, that's smog. That shouldn't be a good thing. So um, that was kind of the beginnings. And then it just, uh, it flew off from there. And how was developing the story of Moi Vosduhor Air Care through the years? Right. Um, initially, the first couple of years, we were focusing uh, here um, in Skopje and Macedonian and in the general sector. Um, but we realized we're not the only ones that are facing this, pro this problem because people started getting awareness here. As uh, we all have these little things in our pockets, we, we realized, hey, this is a great medium to get information to people and make it very accessible and easy for them to understand the quality of air. The more people realized this, the more people started uh, not only becoming more aware, but demanding more um, and trying to see what are the possible solutions towards this uh, problem. Uh, we had, uh, I think, after a year of, of air care being present and a, a year of people understanding what they breathe, um, there were a lot of protests on the streets. People were demanding greener and cleaner air. So this started a movement in a way where uh, now by being aware, we were trying to tackle and solve this problem. Where's this coming from? Is it from households that are burning wood or maybe other materials? Is it from the industry side? Where uh, and what is polluting our air and is stopping us from breathing something more clean? It started from there and it started picking up attention both in the civil sector and the government sector as well. We, we had people in, in parliament waving screenshots, which was great, meaning that uh, even the government side was waking up towards this, this issue. Um, and then after a couple of years and, and, and some slow but steady progress, I have to say slow, very slow, but steady progress, uh, we realized we're not the only ones. Our country is not the only ones that are facing this issue. In 2019, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was the first year where we decided to expand outside of the borders and we went to Serbia. We said, hey, close market, these guys probably have the similar uh, problem as us. So we expanded to Serbia and somehow created the same exact impact there. People became aware, people started demanding change and change slowly but surely uh, was starting to be implemented. Um, throughout the years, we've grown to over 45 countries now uh, some of them facing more air pollution issues than others. Some of them very seasonal, like in the U.S., where the majority of air care's user base actually right now is. Um, and this is where we help people during wildfire season to, to track the air quality outside. Um, so they, they're more seasonal versus the more constant, let's call it Eastern European uh, blob of pollution that, that hovers around that, that side of the content, continent, where we also help a lot of people. So from a tiny little, uh, what do you call it, bedroom, uh, bedroom experiment, let's call it, uh, where we were just trying to figure out how to, uh, how to code apps to an app that is known all around the world. Uh, it really grew and for me, um, showed that it does not matter that we come from a tiny little country, that not a lot of people might know where to pinpoint on the map. Um, using technology, we can have a global reach. Yes, indeed. Actually, I think that you are so recognizable by your application that uh, your new surname is Gorian Moy Vozduhor, Gorian Air Care. Everybody knows, knows you from that uh, nickname, let's say. Um, your eco-focused mission and the data from your app uh, brought people to the streets protesting for cleaner air. When you were creating the app, could you imagine that your application would inspire change within a community will become tool for activists and governments and we start a movement for clean air. 
that was never the initial plan, let's call it. I didn't expect it to grow as big as it did. Maybe a couple hundred downloads, maybe a couple hundred people being interested in this power users, let's call it, people who really, really want to know what's going on. But what we found out, and probably by accident, was that a very simple and intuitive design of, of an app, of a web page that's trying to convey this technically complex information really helped people understand what they were breathing. So we discovered that just through very simple design, you can help convey any sort of more complex information to this group of people who does, they don't need to be scientists, they don't need to be scholars, they don't need to have a background in, in air quality. I, even I don't have a background in air quality, but through a very simple design, you can really help people um, understand what they're breathing. And I think this is where we learned uh, that the power of information does lie with, within mobile apps, at least for, at least for us. Um, but yes, it, we were surprised. And the beauty, I think, of the whole movement was we were not alone. We were not the first ones to talk about air pollution here. There have been NGOs, there have been eco-organizations that have been talking about this for years. But now through technology, we made it very easy for them to say, hey, you know, the thing that we talked about for the last I don't know, five, 10 years, this is it. It says right here, you can check it for yourself now and you can understand what we were saying. And suddenly I think a lot of people realized both from the civil and government sector that we're all breathing the same air. There's no escaping this air. It, it, you open the window, no matter if you're rich or poor, uh, you live on the, in one side of the city or the other, you will breathe the same air. And this is why I think this kind of unites us. This problem unites everybody that there's no running away from it. We all have to put in our effort to, uh, to solve it. We are all breathing, breathing the same air, no matter if you live in Skopje or Western Balkans in general or America. And as you have mentioned, your application started from apartment in Skopje, now has reached 45 countries and also reached uh, America. Uh, air care was also mentioned as one of the top rated apps for outdoor air quality in America in an article entitled How bad is the air quality from a wildfire smoke? And unfortunately, in the last period, we have witnessed uh, numerous forest fires in North Macedonia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Greece, Italy, France, USA, Canada, etc. How much did these uh, wildfires affect the air quality? Any fire affects air quality. I mean, it's very unfortunate and we were following the situation quite closely. It was scary to say the least. Um, it, uh, I mean, wildfires in general are very hard to control and especially if you're not well equipped to, to, to do such a, such a task. And uh, the dry season that is coming, unfortunately with global warming and the global crisis, uh, climate crisis will just make this worse and worse. And this is something that we need to be prepared for. And what I try to tell a lot of people is, again, as is with the air, it is very much hard to escape the concept of wildfires as we progress within this climate crisis uh, era where we need to really tackle this problem if we don't want to see this happening. Because you can say, hey, here in North Macedonia, around Skopje, there were wildfires. Uh, but same was in California. And that's on the other side of the globe. And they were facing the similar issues. Um, you can you can see it from Turkey. You can see it all the way to, to I don't know Spain, um, China, everywhere. Uh, there's no escaping the the um, consequences of maybe our not so healthy uh, Earth lifestyle. Let's call it throughout these these hundreds of years where technology revolutions and industrial growth has become uh, the norm. So I think wildfires are definitely even though seasonal really bad for, for air quality. And this is where we need to, uh, to, to help uh, tackle this problem, but also not forget that um, they are much, air wildfires are much more seasonal and there are other factors, including heating at homes, including uh, the industry, which are more constant and a bigger source of pollution that also needs to be equally tackled in order to breathe clean air. And when we were talking about the other factors and about breaking green, um, we cannot omit the destruction of urban green spaces as a result of urbanization. Um, we both live in Skopje, a city that for several years in a row is at the top of most polluted cities in the world, but also a city where people consciously continue to destroy the lungs of the city. 
uh, what can we do to stop or to reverse this process? I think one of the things that we really need to start to understand is thinking in the long term. Um, it is hard for a human being to think in the long term. That's why people smoke. Uh, smoking is will, will cause health issues in the long term, but we don't see that right now. So we say, hey, you know what? That's going to maybe, uh, I don't know what's gonna, what the future will bring. I'll just enjoy this now. Same thing goes with, with green spaces in, in, in urban areas like, like Skopje. Um, we say, hey, you know what? We'll cut down this tree and we'll, we'll, we'll destroy this park and put a building or a parking here. We'll, we'll plant some other ones down the road. Maybe, maybe that'll offset the damage that we've done. But you can't offset damage if you take down trees that have been living here for tens of, or hundreds of years with a new planted tree that is very likely to even fail because you're not watering it correctly. Um, we don't think of these consequences for both us and our children and our grandchildren and everybody else that's living here of massive urbanization of cities. Um, I think one thing that does quite annoy me here uh, is that we are, I don't know, forcefully, let's call it, uh, urbanizing Skopje as one of the, well, it's the capital city, yes, but instead of investing and focusing on all of these other little cities that we have throughout the country, somehow we're going to become a city republic, what I call it, because everyone is, is enticed to move here because everything is going on only here. Hence, this will lead to destroying of green areas. Hence, this will lead to massive urbanization of a very small piece of land that simply will not be able to handle this amount of people. And thus, pollution will grow. Thus, uh, ecology problems will come along with it. We have a beautiful country. Our country is vast, it's beautiful, it has amazing nature, and it has amazing places. I don't believe that we should all be trying to cram ourselves into one city, because then this has its fair share of problems. And I think these problems definitely outweigh any sort of benefits that we have on focusing our attention on one city. So I don't know, even myself, I'd be more than happy to go, go to Kratovo or go to, go to Prilep or some other little place where I'll be closer to nature, I'd, I'd feel more, more at home and breathe a little bit more clean air. So we need to start thinking long-term if we are to be able to tackle these issues. Yes, definitely. And I think that one of the biggest lessons that we have to learn is uh, that we won't have a society if we destroy the environment. And the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it instead of us. But uh, you're not one of the, uh, someone that else that will save it. You're working definitely on it. And your dedication was recognized in 2020 when you were awarded as European Young Innovator by World Summit Awards for your work on raising air pollution awareness through air care. Um, the European Young Innovators Festival brings together the pan-European uh, community of young innovators who use digital technology to achieve the SDGs. Could you tell us more about this experience? I think it was wonderful. It was um, it was a little bit unexpected, I'll, I'll have to say, because we... Um, um, the World Summit Award is a great place. It's, it's a great festival of, of ideas, of, of people, of impact makers, and, and a whole generation of impact people that are gathered in one place. And unfortunately, this, of course, last year it was all online due to the COVID situation, but it still allowed us to connect a lot with all of these great minds that, that are trying to solve um, world problems and, and working on the sustainable development goals of, of the United Nations. Um, all over the place. And I think for me, it was not, not just for me, of course, for my team, it was a great honor because the World Summit Awards is an organization founded by the UN and to be recognized by such an organization on a European and then afterwards also on a global level was for us just uh, was mind blowing and another confirmation that we are on the right path. We should continue down, down this path. Um, for me, um, I used to live in the Netherlands for four years. I did my master's degree there. I worked a little bit there and I saw a completely different type of society, society where um, nature and green were being put first, cities where public transport, uh, pedestrians and cyclists were being put in front of cars. Uh, that might sound wrong. They were put, being put in first place um, and then vehicles were being put maybe, maybe second or, or last place. 
And it showed that a city could be envisioned differently uh, towards European values and, and values where you could uh, really put nature and, and humans and our values and, I don't know, needs first before um, anything else. And I think I saw exactly the same thing through the European, uh, through the uh, World Summit Awards. And it was just a great experience to say, hey, look, there's other people out there doing it. We are not alone. I'm not alone, which also is a very good encouragement that, hey, it's a partnership of people. And I'm super happy to be part of that community and really look forward to seeing what 2021 brings in those awards and what kind of ideas uh, have people thought of this year. Amazing. And um, when a young European ambassador and young European innovator are talking about providing breathing space for our country, city, and Western Balkans in general, um, we should not forget the launching of the Green Agenda for the Western Balkans, which is a new support in decarbonizing the Western Balkans. So as a digital technology expert and eco-activist, what is your opinion? How the agenda will help for the green and digital transformation in the region? I think the agenda will help as much as we put it in action. And the agenda itself is a good document, but it is, as I said, a document. It is a piece of paper, which we have all agreed and committed to, to working. And by all, I mean the governments of, of Western Balkans have agreed to and committed to working on this. But it is really, really important that we don't just leave it at it as a commitment. We don't leave it as a paper we have signed at some point and then forget it in, in the massive heap of papers that we have, but we really, really put it to use. Um, We've, as North Macedonia, we, we are, I don't know, one of the leaders in, in that document, which surprised me when I was reading it, where we said that we are going to shut down coal power plants very, very soon and, and quite faster than the other countries in the Western Balkans. Um, and I'm super happy to hear that. That is, that is a great achievement. If we reach it, it would be a great achievement. But then again, it is, and I always have to state this, it's not only about making promises, but delivering them. Um, and with the air pollution becoming a bigger problem with the global climate crisis becoming a bigger problem. We cannot give ourselves more time to wait and more time to deliberate and more time to postpone these things. These things should not happen tomorrow. These things should happen yesterday. And because they did not happen yesterday, we really need to push them to happen today before um, the situation uh, becomes worse because um, it's a great document. It really outlines how this whole region should be moving forward. And I think collaboration between entities, not only governments, also the, the, the civil sector, also the NGOs throughout these regions together, can we move this uh, forward and can we put this document into practice um, in the time being? So um, I usually send messages to, to any sector um, that we as activists and we as, as eco-organizations and NGOs should not be seen as a threat. We are not a threat. As I said earlier, we all breathe the same air. So it is as much of a value to us as is to anybody else to breathe clean air. So we really want to work together uh, with all involved parties on this to actually make this become a reality. Um, when we are talking about facing the eco challenges in the future, there is a quote that says nature is our greatest teacher. So I would like to ask you, what lessons did the nature try to teach us with all the recent events? Do you think that we have learned from them? And if so, how much did we have learned from them? We need to realize that as a human race, we are not indestructible. We have come to think of ourselves as the most high level society functioning species on the earth, um, that we're free to roam and do whatever we please. And while we might have the cognitive ability to pull that off, we are not indestructible. Nature, um, the earth, the universe is much more powerful than what we could ever become. And if we don't learn to live in harmony with all of these forces, these forces will just take over us and we will just be part of history. Uh, and maybe some other civilization in, in thousands of millions of years might dig up fossils and say, hey, look, there's some ancient cities that used to live here. We need to understand that we are part of an ecosystem. And if we continue destroying this ecosystem and not learning our lesson, this ecosystem will just take over us. Um, the dinosaurs were here. They're no longer here. 
Uh, not that they really tried to destroy that ecosystem, but uh, it just showed the power of these huge big beings. And then they were still uh, taking, taken out of, uh, of the pages of, of history very easily. Um, I really wish to see humans uh, and the human race, and again, this is very Mr. Universe <laughs> style, but I really do wish that we all understand we should live in harmony with the earth. We can live in harmony with the earth. We are technologically advanced to the point where we can pull this off. It is no longer the industrial revolution where we're still trying to figure out engines and, and so on. No, we have clean renewable sources of energy. We have clean transportation ways. We could live our lives in a much better fashion, but that does mean that we need to change our old ways of being. We have to start forgetting fossil fuels. We have to start forgetting that we need to focus only on, I don't know, uh, money and making money and becoming rich. No, becoming rich is one with nature. If, we're, if we have nature around us, we are rich. I mean, you can cut down on the trees, but the money you've printed will not produce oxygen, will not give you clean air at the end of the day. So it's just about a change of mindset, which I think is coming especially with the newer generations that are being thrust in this world uh, that requires saving. I think a lot of people are starting to become more aware. Um, a lot of countries are starting to become more aware. And I hope that that is more contagious than anything else that we've seen in the last couple of years, um, that this thought of a green future becomes the norm, becomes the standard of our way of, of being. Yes, indeed. We are, I did do so, I think so, that we are becoming aware that we belong to the earth, the earth not, does not belong to us. And as a final remark, I would like to ask you, what do you think is the most powerful message to send for people to react and take action? And what young people should do in order to prevent breaking green and be more greener? Um, I think you said it, actually. You mentioned that we should not wait for a higher power to fix the problems for us. May that be a, a, a government body or a spiritual power. We should not wait. We are here. We are human and we can take action. Every single one of us can take action. It could be starting from something very small as changing the way that we live, but it also could be mean lobbying for change. Uh, people in, in institutions and in governments should start listening to their own citizens of, of what they're supposed to be doing. And we should ask them to listen. We should no longer just stand by, be angry on social media, write angry Facebook posts saying, hey, you know, <clears throat> this is going bad or, or there's pollution outside. No, we know that. We're aware. Air care has now made you aware. What is the next step? Get out there, get involved in all of these groups. There are a bunch of beautiful NGOs out there and a bunch of eco organizations that are really fighting for a cleaner and greener future of the earth. And all you need to do is get involved. Maybe cut down one, two, three hours of scrolling on Instagram is what I tell my friends uh, per week, not per day, per week, that's a long time. And use that time to volunteer and make your building better, make your neighborhood better, make your city better, maybe make your country better. And only if we all start realizing we need to do this and not wait for somebody else, is then we can actually start moving forward towards this green future we, we all wish to have. And not to forget to bring our own coffee cup. Exactly, exactly. Small but valuable steps. <laughs> I couldn't think of a better way to end this podcast. Um, Gurian, thank you for sharing your inspirational story, for your word of wisdom and for reminding us that we have to go green before the green goes. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much for covering this topic. I think it's very important both for, for everybody. It is important as, as a thing. So um, I really hope that uh, we'll talk in a year, two or three and say, hey, look, this is how far we've now come in, in this circle. So let's make sure that both us here, you and me, and everybody else really does our part for that. As for the listeners, thank you for listening to the fourth podcast episode of Coffee with Yeah. I hope that you have enjoyed as much as I do. To catch all the latest from YES, follow us on social media. And do not forget that the Green Revolution is the best solution to arrest pollution and stop breaking green. See you in a month for your monthly dose of Coffee with YES. Mm -hmm.